further, I'm going to ask before you go any further, I'd like to ask our Director of Faith and Mission and Learning, Ms. Marguerite O'Connor, to lead us in the acknowledgement of country and our prayer. We acknowledge and pay our respects to the traditional custodians, past and present, of this land of the Darug people, who long before us lived, loved, and raised their children on this land. We acknowledge all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander families in our community and acknowledge their deep physical and spiritual connections to their land. We come together today to learn, to share, and to journey together. Let us place ourselves in the presence of God as we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. God of love, you are with us as we face every part of our journey and experience change. As we enter in this new era, era, era with excitement and even some anxiety, we recall your deep compassion, presence and abounding love. We thank you for the gifts, talents and skills with which you have blessed us. We thank you for the experiences that have brought us to this moment. We thank you for the work of others that gives breadth and depth to our own work. Be with us as we move forward, rejoicing with you and supporting one another. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. St. Paul, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Marguerite. Um, welcome to uh, our Year 7 Parents for 2022. We have over 160 Year 7s coming in next year. And by day 50 here tonight, we, we hope that we'll get to see all of you very, very uh, soon, early in the next year in 2022. Tonight, there's a number of presenters. I'm Paul Finner, and I'm, the, I'm proud to be the college principal here at St. Paul's, our wonderful community. Um, I've got uh, a, present, a short presentation to give you, followed by our college assistant principal, Mr. Simon Humphreys. You've met uh, uh, Marguerite O'Connor, our director of faith and mission in learning. Our director of pedagogy and innovation, Ms. Michelle Jones, will also be speaking to you tonight. Our director of community engagement, Ms. Cynthia El Curie. We'll talk to you a little bit about transition. And our college captain, we're very privileged to have him along tonight, Victor Dwayhe. Also with us tonight, two other members of the executive who you will meet along the way, Mr. Jason McHale, who's our Director of uh, Curriculum for Learning, and Mr. Lawrence Kumo, our Director of Learning Administration. So there's quite a bit you're going to hear tonight, and, and, and we understand that uh, there might be a little bit of information overload. That said, the opportunity there is to ask questions in that chat option um, and questions after the presentation tonight. The slides will be shared with you as will the uh, presentation itself. So from me, to give you an idea of what I'm about in terms of my leadership, I've got key pillars, which are really important to me. And I think it's really important to share with the parent body um, what I'm about. So there's the notion of authentic relationships, faith, communication, community, building capacity and presence. To begin with, in terms of authentic relationships, I think they're foundational to everything that we do here at the college. For mine, I go back to John's Gospel, 1010. I came so they may have life and have it to the full. And to put it simply, it's about trying to make sure I have a positive impact on the lives of others. The staff with whom I work, the students in our care, and you, the families within our community. I see teaching as a vocation, and I think we're really blessed to be in such a role that we can have such a positive impact on our young people. I'm really big on the story, and the staff will tell you, and the boys will tell you, I talk about the story quite a lot. And I'm really, I really am encouraging of sharing our story, us sharing our story with you, you sharing your story with us. As St Paul said, let us pursue things making for peace and the things that are up building to one another contributing in the way that is so positive to the lives of others that they walk away with a smile on their hearts, knowing that they've been supported. I'm very big on the dignity of difference. We are a really diverse community here in St. Paul's and proudly so. We like to be inclusive in all that we do. And it's something that we really do support, that dignity of the different stories that come. Every boy that comes to our college comes from a different narrative and a different background and a different context. And we want to appreciate and value that and for your sons to share it with us. From that point of view, I'd like to move on to faith because faith, obviously, as a Catholic community, we are unashamedly Catholic. And I know that Marguerite O'Connor, our Director of Faith and Mission, will talk more about this. But Matthew's Gospel, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. It's about bringing the kingdom to our students to make their lives better, to give them the tools 
that well, they can be the face of Christ to others. I'm very big on inviting the students and you, the families, to the table. And being a Eucharistic community, that we come together in faith, in communion with one another and supporting one another. The opportunity for prayer is something that we hold very dear. There's prayer for every lesson each and every day. And there's a prayer group that Marguerite will also talk a little bit more about later. But we are very big on supporting our boys to be in relationship with their God. Through our liturgical immersion and outreach opportunities, that connection between the gospel and the lived reality of the students and you, the families. We want you to be a part of such opportunities as well. And we try to support those who live at the margins in our community. We have student and staff formations throughout the year. That whole nation of encounter with Christ and trying to make sure that we promote not only our Catholic identity, but give the opportunity for our boys and our staff to engage with their God, to be in relationship with their God, but also with each other as a, as a communion of believers. Communication is a really big thing for me and, I, and for our staff too. I see communication as being, being consistent, being respectful, being open and honest. Parents, I really support feedback. I'm happy to accept any feedback. Cranky, you're happy. Because it's not always going to, not always going to be positive. Sometimes you are going to have concern. You need to know that we are accessible to you. I myself as principal, doesn't mean you, don't, you can always ring and call. I'll take your call as we will, because we're about communicating with each other. We don't solve a problem if we don't know anything about it. And in terms of that, the parent communication, and Simon and Humphrey, our assistant principal, might talk a little bit about this with our student diary. There's an opportunity to communicate with us, not just through the phone call, but the diaries themselves. And the purpose really of the communication between yourself as parents and us as a college and vice versa is about trying to help your son. It's not trying to, it's not about anything else. It's about trying to develop your, your son and to help him in his, in his story and his journey here at St Paul's. I always talk about the staff, about the power of the positive phone call. Often we think about phone calls being made home. I know when I ring parents and I'll say, hi, it's Paul Finner and the principal. You hear that intake of breath, <gasps> what's he done? But sometimes it's about what he's achieved. And it's something that we talk about as, as a staff too. And we really encourage to call home to say, you know, Paul did really well today. And it's really important they feel they're valued about what they can achieve, not just the concerns about them. From that point of view, as a community, it really is about that whole nation of many gifts, one community, that our motto, and again, I know Marguerite will talk a little bit about this, that we cherish the, the gifts that your boy brings to our community. We cherish the, gifts, cherish the gifts that your family bring to our community. We want to provide opportunities for you to come and share your story with us, to share your gifts. We're about hope and giving hope to our young men because if they feel they can achieve, if they feel they've got a gift that they can share, then that brings them, that gives them hope. And then they can pay that forward to our to their colleagues as well and their peers. Families, you are not alone. As we know, the COVID year this year has, has prevented so many challenges with lockdown lasting several months. But you're not alone. And some of the parents might feel that they are. I know some of the teachers we, we might feel that we're alone too. And the boys themselves. But you need to know that we're in partnership with you. And you'll notice the symbols on my slides. A lot of them are about hands being joined those being in communion with one another. You need to know, mums and dads, that we're with you and we're going to walk with you and support you all the way in trying to make sure that your boys have the best education they can possibly have and ultimately the best lives they can possibly have. We talk here as a staff about collaboration and collegiality and we offer opportunities for our staff to share ideas about how their, their, their students can best learn. But that applies to you too as parents. We want to collaborate with you. We want to be in, have a spirit of collegiality with you as well in trying to work with you. From that point on, then, we move to the whole nation of building capacity. I'm big on trying to build the capacity of our staff, giving them professional op uh, uh, learning opportunities, highlighting the nation that they are co-learners. Co it's not just your boys who are learners too, it's our staff. And I think for you as parents also, there's the opportunity for you to learn. Next year, I know Mr. Humphrey, Simon Humphrey will talk a lot about the Resilience Project. There's going to be opportunities for you to have some learnings around that, about what the Resilience Project means as part of our wellbeing program here at the college. Our staff, we have goal setting in terms of wanting them to be aspirational. We want our staff to strive, strive towards excellence, but also to set high expectations for your sons. For parents, the Parents and Friends Association, where we meet twice a term, and I'll talk 
a lot more about this in February. Um, there's an opportunity for you to have a voice in the college. As a parent and friend association, we're talking about a strategic three-year plan where we will set goals for the parents. Presence is so very important to me also. And the notion of being there, not just visible, but actually being present. I'm being, I'm being present to the staff. I go and say hello to the staff every morning by name, whether they like it or not. And I go and see the boys at lunchtime to say g'day to them as well, to say hello and to, be, to want to hear about their story. Again, whether they like it or not. But I think it's about understanding that they know that I'm with them and I'm really big on that. So the whole notion of being uh, actively engaged with the story of others, that whole notion of making sure that people know they are supported in all that they do. And I think that's so important in my role as principal. As Mayor Angelou said, at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or did, but how you made them feel. And I think we've got a beautiful community that really lives that. In 2022, we are a learning, we are a learning institution. And so the learning agenda, we really are about the transformation for learning. We had the focus for 21 as being to develop a culture of quality teaching and learning. And we had our targets to be uh, the development of inquiry learning across all KLAs and the effective use of data to inform practice. Those targets are gonna remain in 2022. Why? Well, COVID got in the way a little bit, didn't it? And I think for us, we still think it's something that we need to keep doing. Keep using data, the stories that we hear, the, 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 the results that we get from our diagnostic testing, the results from our reports, NAP plan, et cetera. We wanna use all that data to try and make sure that we provide the best possible uh, education for your boys because that data informs our practice and helps look at where the areas of most need reside. What will help your boys? In 2022, we're introducing a new college learning framework, which will be a really exciting part of our, our, our next stage of our journey here at St Paul's. Part of that journey is going to involve some listening forums with staff, our leaders, our students, but also you as parents. You'll have a voice in that. And I look forward to you having some input and a voice in that learning framework moving forward. Before I hand over to Simon Humphreys, our AP, I'm really excited that you've chosen to, to put your son here at St Paul's. We know that you won't regret it for one minute because we know that we can provide the very best for your son. And we feel blessed ourselves that you've chosen us to share your gift, which who is your son, with us. And we'll cherish him along the way. Thank you. So I'm pass on to Simon Humphreys, our assistant principal. Thanks, Paul. Good, good evening, parents. And look, I suppose Paul started there with, the, with his five pillars and I make it a little bit easier and I say I really have two. The thing I suppose that summarises the best of my role is, is well-being and learning. And I think the first thing I'd like you all to be really aware of, and the boys will certainly know this from me, is that these two things are just intricately related. If we want good learning, we've got to have good well-being. And the two cannot be separate. And of course, it works vice versa. If we've got really good, happy kids, in this case, our boys, then the opportunities to learn is going to be much better. So for me, and I suppose my role as the assistant principal, it's really always a balance between these two things for us. And I suppose the structure at the school at St Paul's, and I know you may have had older boys come through, so you might have a bit of insight there. But certainly for those that might be the eldest boy coming through first, Secondary is a bit different that way, and, and we all know that that's the different ways of that, that uh, transformation over to secondary education. So for many people, that transition um, you know, is quite challenging, and we certainly understand that. So for our Year 7 boys in particular, and I know Mr. Elkuri will talk a little bit further about this, it's really a highlight on helping them for that actual transition into secondary and all the different things that that entails. So the day-to-day -day running of the school, you may know and your boys when you're enrolment that the boys have been placed in a house. Your son is in one of five houses. And if we were meeting live tonight, obviously I'd have the opportunity to introduce. So I am gonna just run through our Leaders of Learning House with you so that you can put a, a face to the name. If your son is in Benelong House, that is Mr. Andrew Abushaya. If your son is in Churchill House, that'll be Ms. Tara Hibbard. If he is in Flory House, that's Mr. Frank Graziani. If he is in Greenway, that's Mr. Chris Bain. And if he's in McKillop, that's Miss Juliana Fox. Now, when we talk about houses, um, it's a little bit Harry Potter, but it's a bit on steroids as well. So the house system is the real basis of the boys. And 
each of those leaders of learning are really responsible for that day-to-day -day running um, of that well-being and learning situation for your boys. So they're really that first port of call you have as their coordinator um, to make inquiries. And certainly if there's any issues that are going beyond that, that, that certainly will come to me as the assistant principal. I suppose when the boys are entering secondary school, one of the first things, um, and I'm constantly dealing with, is about behaviour. And I just want to bring your mindset back to your original interview when, when we had the opportunity to meet with you just prior to lockdown, thank goodness. We talked about our according to St Paul's and we actually made reference to that in the interview, if you remember. These are really, I suppose, our five pillars of what we challenge everybody in our school community to do each and every day. Um, you may see when driving past the school, one of these according to St Paul's is up on, on the big sign, electronic sign out the front. And each week we take one of these to concentrate on. Uh, this is actually week 10, so we're actually in the fifth one there, be honest and truthful in all your actions. And I place this out on campus to the boys, to all the staff, and actually to the parents as well, with a little thought about, well, how can we live out that particular component of what St Paul was asking us to be? Because as we're living in community with each other, and you can appreciate 850 odd boys together at times is very challenging. It's never perfect, but we've got here a model about what we would expect from the boys. And it's really one I think I say to parents all the time, it's a great one to have on the fridge. Because I think if you're trying to evolve any conflict or, or you want to get a set of behaviours that happening at home, there's nothing in there that you couldn't use to apply uh, for siblings and so forth at home. So. That, according to St Paul's, is in our student diary, it's in all our classrooms, and you'll be hearing it when we're talking to the boys, we actually refer to these by name, um, and it's something that your boys will become very familiar with. And in a moment when I talk about the diary, I'm more than happy to, to let you know that. The other big, I think, is really exciting for us in 22, which will be starting with your boys in year seven, is what we call the Resilience Project. And again, Mrs Elkuri will go into a bit of detail for this with you, but really for me, in that mindset about well-being and learning, this is going to be a game changer for us. Because one of the things I suppose in, in 33 odd years of, of teaching and, and many of that being in coordinating and as assistant principal, it's about the boys' well-being that is in, impacting on their behaviour. And the Resilience Project is a very successful, it's worldwide, uh, very big in Victoria and now it's in New Zealand. It's about getting the boys to really start to understand themselves. And we do this for what we call through these GEM. GEM is gratitude, empathy, and mindfulness. And what it does is it gives the boys an emotional literacy to talk about things. And that's really at the pointy end of some of the things I suppose that I deal with quite often. When things have gone wrong and boys are waiting outside my office and coming in and I'm saying, well, what's happened? And you get the inevitable, I don't know, I don't know. You know, it just closes down because they don't have the vocabulary to talk about how they're feeling or what's happened that's caused it. So we're going to enter into a really exciting a time with this resilient project as we build that up so that staff, teachers and parents, you will have a big role in that. Because often you're hearing, I suppose, from educational people, you know, children need to build resilience. Well, that's fine. But what do you know about how to do that? And hopefully together, if we're all on the same page there, we're going to see a, a really good shift in our boys to be able to be happy, resilient young men, being able to face all those things that have come on. And let's face, this year has certainly been a challenge. And one of the things I think I've been most impressed about with our present uh, student body is, is their resilience about the COVID and the online learning. They've done tremendously well, really surprising some of us actually, in terms of how they've coped with that. That's that sort of resilience that we need to build on and, and move. I know Mr. Finneran talked about communication, and that's certainly one of my pillars as well, because there are a lot of different ways that we need to do it. And the more that we do that, the better informed that we are. One of the most important ones is our college diary. I will be sending to you uh, in the next week, as I will to all our parents, the front section of our 2022 student diary. And that really, again, is a game changer for you because reading through that with your son prior to starting next year is going to give you a lot of information and a lot of answers on those policies and procedures and things that you will you no doubt come up against fairly quickly. 
And being informed about that, A, it lets you know, but then if you've got any questions, that's the time when we meet in week three, you can certainly bring those to us and we can have a talk and, and I can explain that even further. So the front section of our diary, there's an index there that's alphabetized and you'll find absolutely a plethora of information there for you on many of the important things, but again, just some of the little bits and pieces of administration of day-to-day -day things which happen. And the use of a diary, I might say, I often, when I visit the year six groups, um, I know I leave a copy of the diary in classrooms for the year six teacher to, to show the boys because it is a very different way. And, and I suppose one of the most important things I think boys need is about that organization. And the diary is a central role in that, about his work, about what he needs to do in his deadlines and how to do that. The second, I suppose, really important part there for communication is on our compass. And many of you would have received our link tonight on the compass app, and you may be using that um, in the primary schools that you are if you're in the diocese. But compass is going to be that really important way for you to be able to communicate. And it's also about making your life easier. Um, absentee notes, all those sorts of things can be done through compass now. And again, it's, it's just a, an easier way for us to be administrating um, what's happening. Reports are released, all that information comes through on Compass. The other important way to be the social tech ways, of course, our website, Facebook and Instagram pages. And as soon as you join those, you're gonna be kept up to date each with a daily almost about things that are happening around the school and hopefully things that your son is involved in um, and that you can give a, a, a topic of conversation for him to have a talk about with as well. One of, I suppose, the real bugbears that we have, and it's really important, and the boys will find out every time I walk around, there's not a boy trying to tuck his shirt in before I get to him. And, and I don't apologize for that because we want our boys, as we say, always say, to be ambassadors of our college. They need to be well-dressed and well-groomed. Um, again, I know that's been a challenge coming back. We probably found that even in primary school now, coming back from our lockdown period. But your grooming, your haircuts, the way you wear your uniform and what you are doing is absolutely spot on. And again, in the front of the diary, that information is all given to you there as well. If we were meeting tonight, our little picture there would show us, I would actually give you a demonstration. Some of the boys actually model that for you so that you know. But if you've got any questions, once you've read that information, and I know many of you put a uh, uniform orders and so forth in already, um, any questions, please make sure you ask first, and then we're happy to explain that. But uniform is, is a really important one. You're gonna certainly find that out from me. Certainly then through, I suppose, just a reminder, and I know this might be a Christmassy type thing that you're thinking about, don't forget Chromebooks are the only laptop theory that they're having in year seven. Okay, so don't let the boys be talking into all sorts of other gizmos and things. Um, and we certainly had that information in your package as well. Um, and that's something you might be thinking about, obviously, when you're getting ready for next year. And again, I think there's a there's an address there for you to have an email address if you've got any questions to our IT department they're more than happy to sort that out for you uh, prior to the end of the year. And finally, I suppose, coming back to my original beginning part, if we want safe, happy boys, and, and I'm, I'm generally pleased that we do, we've got to get this connection between learning and well-being really at the forefront of our thinking. And as I said, our leaders of learning of those five houses and myself are the primary people, I suppose, responsible that on a daily basis. And it's something we all need to work towards uh, to make the betterment of, of your son's experience particularly at that beginning in that transition time. Um, but certainly it doesn't matter what year he's in eventually, you'll stay in the same house all the way through and you will get to know uh, those house leaders of learning very well. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Simon. Uh, now I'd like to hand over to our Director of Faith and Mission and Learning, Ms. Marguerite O'Connor. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I have the privilege of sharing some of our um, aspects of our mission of faith with you. And as you could see through Mr. Finneran's presentation, it is actually something that we are very proud of. And we are very proud of the young men who represent the various activities that we do. Um, I would like to put it, um, a little bit of a lens over who we are and what we are and put it into a faith perspective for you, particularly if you are new to, to a Catholic school. Belonging to a Catholic school means that you are part of a bigger story, a story of faith that is built around a patron and upon which a charism is built. A charism is something that defines a community and is remembered long after a student leaves school. It forms who we are and what we do. St. Paul is a patron of our college. He was not a perfect man, but was one who made questionable life choices. 
It was long, it was after a very personal meeting with Christ that he went on to change not only his life, but the lives of countless people. St. Paul's message was simple. Love God and love one another, treasuring the people around you while sharing the best of yourselves with others. This message is the foundation of our college. It is echoed in our school motto, many gifts, one community, and our college prayer, which calls for us to be tolerant with one another. The ideas of humility, gentleness, and patience are taught each day through reference to according to St. Paul's statements, the guide behavior and relationships as discussed by Mr. Humphreys. A class prayer at the beginning of each lesson and the college prayer, which is prayed each Friday afternoon before we leave for the weekend. Prayer is modeled and shared by all staff, acknowledging that we are all leaders of faith with and for the boys. We gather to celebrate the Eucharist as a whole school throughout the year. And when given the opportunity, we will gather with the parish in year groups to share mass with the wider parish community. This has been a valuable experience for both our boys and parishioners alike, as they are reminded that faith is shared and not isolated. Each Friday, we encourage the boys and staff to start their day by praying the rosary. Our Corinthians prayer group, which has grown to approximately 90 members, continues to grow each week and is led by students. Prayer and liturgy are essential to the faith, but are not true expressions of faith alone. When surveyed, students from around the diocese said that the meaning of faith to them was to do works of service with and for others. As a response, the school offers Ecclesia, an outreach program meaning assembly. It was a term used by the early church to refer to those who followed Christ. The range of programs is aimed at a variety of year groups. Our motto for the initiative is summoned to serve and centers around Paul's words to the Galatians, serve one another with love. Through the giving of time, talents and friendship, the students and teachers have grown in faith and have learned what it means to be the face of Jesus to the community. Whilst we offer a range of opportunities for students to grow in faith, we are only part of the story. You as parents are the first teachers of faith for your children. We encourage you to share your faith, your own faith experiences and have the courage to have conversations with them about what they know and what they may want to know. Regularly ask your kids what questions they have. Ask them the tough questions they don't ask of you and know that it is okay to not have all the answers but we're willing to explore them with together. Throughout the next six years, you will often hear the reference, be a man of St. Paul. Our hope is that each year seven student will be inspired by the example of St. Paul, feeling welcome to share their gifts and their faith openly with all that they encounter, being confident to take the message of love and tolerance to the world long after their time has ended at the college. In the words of Pope Francis, dear young people, do not bury your talents, your gifts that God has given you. Do not be afraid to dream of great things. And we hope you will feel comfortable to dream of great things. Thank you. Thanks so much, Marguerite. I now, now want to pass on to our Director of Pedagogy and Innovation, Ms. Michelle Jones. Michelle. Thank you, Paul. Good evening, everybody. It's lovely to have this opportunity to speak with you this evening. Uh, certainly, uh, it's a little bit different to do it via Zoom, but that's something that we're probably getting a little bit more used to now. Um, I did want to thank you all just for joining us, though, and to have this opportunity to speak to you about your son's learning. It's a very exciting time starting year seven. And lots of opportunities await your, your son. Um, and I really wanted to extend the partnership that um, was mentioned earlier by Paul, Simon and Marguerite, that we really do work in partnership. Just frozen there a little bit there, Michelle. Sorry about that. I think we had some technical difficulties there, but it is lovely to be with you. Um, I wanted to speak to you tonight, uh, if we can move on to the next slide, looking at what it means to be a learner here at St. Paul's. Uh, certainly developing that opportunity of your moral character as part of the faith community here at the college. We expect that the students will be responsible and future focused and develop an active learning opportunity here at the college. 
we celebrate the many gifts of our students. And I know that Paul mentioned that earlier about the diverse opportunities here, and we celebrate that with them. Our students work in a collaborative and collegial manner. We have many opportunities linked to um, our inquiry learning focus. With inquiry learning, it's a key aspect of our teaching and learning here at the college. I'm sure that a lot of the students will have already experienced inquiry learning through the primary school system. We really value that opportunity to allow the students to explore open-ended questions and develop a personal understanding of key ideas as they take that active learning opportunity. And that is extended through the extracurricular opportunities at the college. We really encourage the students to participate in a variety of opportunities with sport, with debate. In public speaking and with music. Uh, there's wonderful opportunities through our test department, especially to our learning framework. Our learning framework is, is very key to our focus moving forward. Thank you so much for your time this evening. It's lovely to speak with you and I look forward to working with you next year. Thanks, Michelle. And certainly as Michelle alluded to there in our learning, it's not just restricted to the four walls of a classroom. It certainly is holistic in the, turn, in the sense that we do give our boys a broad array of opportunities to learn in a variety of fashions. So thank you, Michelle, for that uh, short presentation there. So I'm hand over to Miss Cynthia Elkuri, our Director of Community Engagement. Cynthia? Thanks, Paul. Hi, everyone. Um, the proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, really encompasses what we're trying to do here, what we aim for in helping um, our students, your sons, to transition. As Mr Finneran said, we walk together on this journey with you guys as well as the students. Uh, there are many transition points in young people's lives, starting school, moving from primary to high school, as well as um, the distance learning and now back to in-school learning. Uh, and uncertain, this brings with it uncertainty and instability, uh, but this can also be a really powerful opportunity for our students to learn and grow from there. Uh, here at St Paul's, we use a number of resources to help support our boys in the transition phase and Peer Support Australia is one of them. Uh, we help, or this helps us to guide students through the transition from primary school to high school by connecting them with peers and developing understanding and skills that help them to respond positively to these, um, to these challenges and changes. Peer support is a crucial resource that we use um, for our Year 7 students for that seamless transition. Uh, it starts with our Year 10 peer support leaders, generally at this time of the year, but unfortunately it will start day one of school next year. Um, our Year 10 Peer Support Leaders will meet your sons at the gate, welcome them into the school, um, and they'll be supported by them throughout the semester, uh, as well as Year 7 Camp. So that will happen in Week 4 of Term 1. Our Peer Support Leaders will be there with us, supporting your sons along the journey um, throughout that, uh, that camp. This will help them to participate in activities to build resilience and get to know each other. When we get back to school in week five, uh, our intensive peer support program begins. Uh, this will be in small groups. So we have a number of peer support leaders, three or four peer support leaders with um, 10 to 15 year seven students. And the program runs throughout the semester generally. Um, so as I said, that starts from week five onwards and this helps them to build positive relationships. Uh, Mr. Humphreys um, spoke about the Resilience Project. It is very important for us and we are really, really excited um, to be taking part in the Resilience Project for next year. The research is pretty scary when you look at the numbers in front of you, but it doesn't have to be. Prevention is always better than cure, and that's what we're aiming to do. Um, so we're hoping to give the boys some protective factors that will help them to transition and build those positive relationships rather than work backwards from um, the issues and trying to, to resolve them. Uh, the Resilience Project will include um, positive relationship building, self-awareness, 
effective social and self-management skills and the ability to practice um, coping mechanisms. Um, for that reason, we're going to be running the resilience project from year seven to 12 alongside the peer support program. So year seven boys and year 10 boys don't miss out on this opportunity. Um, and they will work together hand in hand to build gratitude, empathy, mindfulness, and emotional literacy in our students. And we hope that you can support us with this from home. You'll be able to speak to your child to ask them to describe their experiences and the feelings they have towards transitioning, whether it's now coming into high school next year or when they start early next year. Um, just having the language, as Mr. Humphrey said, um, and being able to speak about the emotions they feel will help them to build that vocabulary um, and help them understand their emotions a lot better. Um, and this will help strengthen our community bonds because as I said, we need to work, uh, work together and travel this journey together. So I hope we will have your support in doing this as well. Thank you. Thanks, Cynthia. Trendy, we, we view transition as such a crucial part um, of your son's educational journey. Coming from primary into secondary schooling is a big jump. So and it's really unfortunate that we couldn't have because of um, COVID restrictions, having the boys on site today um, as first part of their orientation. Before, before I hand over to Victor, I just want to continue just what Cynthia was talking about there, the whole notion of well-being and what Simon was saying as well. It's so important and intrinsic to the boys being able to learn well. That building of resilience in such difficult times where they're challenged in so many ways, not the least of which social media challenges a lot uh, about how the boys think, what they think of themselves, what it means to be masculine, what it means to be a young man. But that transition program is really important. And as uh, Cynthia has alluded to, there's many layers to it. Our orientation obviously is going to be a part of a two-day transition program in the start of next year for your boys. So they don't have normal class in those two days. It's about getting to know the college, getting to work with their peer support leaders, or meet the student leaders, get to understand the culture of the college and trying to help them ease into secondary schooling life. They've also got the camp, as Cynthia mentioned, in week four. And the work with the peer support leaders is an ongoing process. There's lots of support for your boys coming into, into year seven. So, and I'm sure Victor Dwayne, our college captain, might reference that in his talk to you in just a moment. Victor was elected as our college captain for 2022. And let me tell you, it's a superb student leadership team. So for Victor to have accomplished that feat of becoming the college captain says much about the wonderful young man he is. And we're really excited about what his leadership will bring. So I'll introduce Victor to you now. So Victor, a few words. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, good evening, parents. As you've known, my name is Victor Dwayhi and I've been given the priv privilege to fulfill the role as St. Paul's College Captain of 2022. I am incredibly excited for the new Year 7 students to join our school and become a part of our college community. I believe that the students at St. Paul's, like we're more than peers. We treat each other with unconditional respect, and as the years progress, the bond between us only strengthens. Many gifts, one community. Our school's motto precisely describes our schooling community, as each student and staff member brings their own unique talent and skill into the college and shares amongst others, forming our diverse and distinct community. As I'm sure you can tell, the staff at our college are exemplary, knowledgeable, patient, and friendly. The bond which students form with staff is based on the foundations of respect, love, and genuine care, allowing all students to feel safe and comfortable within the college. As you could see, I use the terms our and we. This is because when I myself walk into the college, I feel as though I'm at my second home. I believe as a collective, because our school, our college is a collective community filled with respect, kindness, and support. Our college follows the teachings of St. Paul strictly because his teachings are those which we can live in our daily lives. We do this by implementing the according to St. Paul in our words and our deeds. Last week, the entire student leadership team of the college have thought of a word which we aim to achieve by the end of next year. It is that of synergy. Synergy is the act of combining numerous organizations or groups into one holistic group for the greater good of a community or an outcome. 
By joining all of the gifts which students bring to our college, we believe that we can form one united community of St. Paul's Catholic College. On behalf of the college, we'd like to thank you for entrusting us to foster in your son a love for others and learning. We hope your sons will flourish into hardworking, cautious and intelligent young men. Thank you. Thanks very much, Victor. Uh, not bad, yeah? Not bad at all. He's, he's a wonderfully articulate young man and he, he really does represent the very best that our college uh, encapsulates. So thank you very much, Victor, for your input tonight. I know that many of you might have lots of questions for us and rather than have it an open forum tonight, we've created a U7 uh, 2022 classroom page and there's the code to be able to enter that uh, then that okay to actually access that page. Then that page will have, and by tomorrow, there'll be an opportunity for you to have uh, a space there to ask some questions, which we will respond to as soon as possible. Also within that page, I will place a link to our Google wellbeing site that we've created as well. It's a wellbeing site that contains resources across many areas, pathways and partnerships, teaching and learning, faith, and not just wellbeing itself. So lots of resources there to help you work with your sons in catering for their needs as best as possible. Again, we thank you for coming tonight. We hope this is the start of a really active and participatory relationship, one where we can actually um, work together to make sure that your sons are coming out, not just the best young men, but young men who are confident who are able to make a positive contribution to the world into which they will enter. If you've got questions, please put them in the chat before you go tonight or under the, under the classroom page that's been created. Thanks so much for your attendance. We look forward to working with you and journeying with you. See you later. Thanks a lot.